Hey there everyone, Kalandor here, and we are watching the Summer Game Fest uh, reaction, uh, reacting to, I don't know, whatever. We got 10 to, to, to get into it, the PS re, P, PS5 reveal thing, um, so let's see what the PlayStation is going to be giving us. Here we go, Summer Game Fest, play the future, May, August to 2020, Summer Game Fest dot com showcase big games all right unreal engine oh hello oh man epic games uh doing games epically i was always wondering um i'm just gonna shut up and listen never mind what i was gonna say there Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I have honestly zoned out at this point. I the show don't tell, please. We thought we can push forward. Truly virtualized geometry. The artist was concerned over polygons, draw calls, and memory. To directly use film quality assets and bring them straight. I just I just want to get into the, the like actual game stuff. I get it. They want to like talk about their stuff. Yo, if they, I just, I really don't care. I really don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care about the, te I, the, the problem with stuff like this is the regular people don't, we don't care about the technology. This is useful for like the people making the games. For me, I just like, what? Uh. All right, let's see here. Got, we got. We got we got a we got a little fancy light. Ooh, it looks fancy. It looks like a Vigi game. Looks like a nice looking vi dang though. That do be that do be do looking nice though, I will admit. And it's on YouTube, so oh. No. Uh Can you please continue? We use the cinematic versions which would typically only be used in film. Look, I get it. I get it. They all use HD you... textures as well. <laughs> but please, I just want to see this. I just want to see it. Uh, see, the problem with like tech stuff like this is that they want to talk about it. I don't care. I don't care. The majority of people don't care. They're they're like advertising this to the average Joe kind of person. And this is what went wrong with the first playstation 5 reveal is that they like <sighs> hyped it up a bit i don't know i just just show it in progress i don't care maybe i'm just being a little whitey annoying i don't know man i just am i am i being too negative i might be being too negative right now without gi all of that beautiful lighting is gone look i get it I get it. It's cool. It's technical. It's probably very impressive for people who actually care about that. That probably means a lot, but th that's not what I want to see. I'm the average Joe consumer. I would show me the cool stuff. Oh man, the Fortnite, <laughs> the Fortnite community is gonna love this for their battle royale. Actual working footsteps. I don't know. I don't really know. That's just a lot. Of, I heard a lot of complaints before about like the footsteps not really being accurate in Fortnite. So not something I know. I just thought it'd be lay funny, epic, meme, big chungus, reddit, gold. No, but seriously, uh, if you like the video, like, subscribe. Thanks. This form of oh, look at the bats! Ah, yes. Like the water, yes, like the waterfall, because it looks like a waterfall of bats. I see, that's why it's called, oh my gosh, it all makes sense. To run fluid simulations like you see in the water below. <sighs> yeah, that was s slowly walking through water, yeah. Cool. 
and there's the little tiny rocks. Here we are using it to accurately simulate the rigid bodies of the falling rocks and the cloth of the skirt. No, for real though, this this does. There, there's some really impressive stuff here. It looks good. Uh, I'm just I'm just being a bit of a wanker right now. It's just not really much to commentate on, you know. It's very a oh, bird. I could talk about the bird. It was uh, looked like a bird. <laughs> oh no, a bird! Oh, more birds! That'd be kind of interesting if they could create tech. If there was like, if part of this technology was like how they were talking about the sound stuff, is if the birds reacted depending on like where they heard the sounds coming from. So. Like how it re reverberates differently. Like if you decided to climb that up differently, the sound re reverberated. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking. About. What I'm talking about. <laughs> lights. Ah, bugs. Any light source can move while still having beautiful bounce light. It does. Uh, it's kind of, like I was saying earlier about the. I don't know what this guy's. You can even see the Niagara-powered bugs reacting to the light. Oh hey, he did talk about the bugs. Niagara-powered bugs. Oh, nasty bugs. Nasty bugs. I don't know. A problem is it's hard for me to really get a scale of how impressive this is because the, the now gen of video games are impressive to me as well. Like, like I do, since I'm not really a technical person, it's just like, could this, how much of this can't be done now and how much can it be done can only be on next gen and stuff. Like, I'm sure a lot of this stuff is a lot more impressive. It's just, like, I'm just dumb brain. Because, like, I'm always, like, sh wowed. <sighs> Over this entire demo, there are hundreds of billions of triangles. Hundreds of billions of triangles. <laughs> okay. Wow, this... This... Demo destroys the Legend of Zelda. That only has three triangles in it. Do you, do you know how many Triforces this game has? More than Legend of, more than every single Zelda game combined. You have fully dynamic lighting and global illumination. All running. But honestly, the only triangles I care about are uh, Tifa's or original triangles and uh, the first FF7, not the remake. Now those were literal triangles she had. The pointy bits. Mm. I thought that was just gonna be like a fire or something, but no, it's like, I have the fiery glow thing. I Naruto power. Oh yeah, she's, she'd be talking though. She'd be talking. I really want to see if they could, like, what you could do, like, if you knock over a statue with a domino effect and how that would look. I feel like that should have been part of the tech demo, to be honest. Alright, the bit rate of watching this on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, leave something to... Maybe that's part of the reason why I'm not so wowed is because of uh, I'm watching this on YouTube and it does not look the best. <laughs> uh, but dang, that looked, that looked cool. It probably would have looked cooler if, you know, there was uh, actually bitrate happening. <laughs> no, there's looks like there's a lot of particle effects, lots of things happening. Unreal engine V also known as five so that was an interesting tech demo is there anything else in this uh I mean 2021 oh it's not even oh it's not even uh, uh, five is real and that was the oh, wow time footage of uh, I mean I always kind of thought there'd be another one coming a, to be honest day, I think for gamers to get a glimpse at uh, where games are going next and now it's my honor to be joined by uh, three guys from epic to talk a little bit about uh, today's announcement of course we've got Tim Sweeney 
And my question is how many people are I know there's a lot of things that use Unreal Engine but like a lot of video game companies use their own stuff as like their own engines you know oh, he's you know turn this is I know a special moment for you to have you know put a five on this Unreal Engine I remember just just slap a five on that four boom that's all it is it's the same as four <laughs> Just, just got a little and, and sticky and note with a five scribble on it and plastered onto it there. Like, can you believe this is what a PC screenshot of the original Unreal Engine? How far we've come. Um, it is. Me, I, mean, I that is something that I think about all the time. To be honest, just like how far we've come. Uh, in just like in graphics alone on video games, it's it's actually astounding to me to think about. Well, this really is. A a generational leap or more in um, technological capabilities. Um, and the, this, the hardware that Sony is uh, launching... Yeah, I got to admit, I'm clonking out. I, uh, I'm clonking out here, to be honest. A completely new storage architecture that blows, a, blows half the architectures out of the water, and it's far ahead of the, even the state-of-the-art and the highest-end PCs you can buy. Um, and so... Who... Who... who who cares? Uh, a new generation of technology that empowers creators to create photorealistic uh -huh. scenes that are indistinguishable from reality. Oh, he's got a thing in the back, uh, the so ball with the plasma ball. Right? I mean, there are two problems in, uh, in game from ball. Animal Crossing. Is, uh, Dang, I can't believe they made the thing from Animal Crossing into a real life thing. Dude must be a big Animal Crossing fan. Dang. I wonder where I can get one of those. That'd be nice. create a major new piece of content for next generation games. And so Unreal Engine 5 attacks both of those problems. We have the Nanite system for virtual geometry, enabling sub-pixel geometry, uh, which is imperceptibly uh, dis imperceptibly different. Oh from boy! Quality assets. So the movie quality oh boy! Were originally scanned. Um, this is uh, real time global illumination. He um, is going um, through some technical stuff right now. I just free artists uh, from having to worry about the details of. <laughs> Of lighting their levels um really don't care do you let me know down in the comments below if you guys care about the technical stuff like i don't know out of all the unreal engine stuff before in the past i was like yeah that's it's always cool seeing like an upgrade like when we went from three to four it was like oh cool but i never watched a video of it explaining the technical details of it yeah i mean when you look at that footage uh you know in 4K, I mean, just the, the level of detail. Everyone else, so sheesh, they, they don't got anything inter other than the plasma ball. Visually, what's you know, like, at least there was the Xbox fridge in the, uh, systems that you're really proud of, um, in the Xbox gameplay reveal. How it's going to kind of shape games moving forward. Okay, so um, Nana is a uh, new geometry system for Unreal Engine that lets us get down to almost sub-pixel levels of detail on the screen. You know, it's, cable, it's, it's possible because we have a new generation of hardware that really allows us to put loads and loads of... I'm trying really hard to pay attention to this, all this, all this stuff. I just... Allowed us to be able oh, to I am just too impatient. You know, maybe I, I realize this is a me problem, so not a them problem, but like... I can't be the only one who just doesn't care about this stuff, right? And the artist doesn't even have to think about it. They can move rocks and uh, mountains and statues wherever they want in the scene. You can literally move, move mountains, mountains. staying. Uh, Lumen, the global illumination system that Tim mentioned. Um, Is there a whole song about like incredibly realistic and moving a mountain or something? So wherever you place a light in the scene, its effect on the whole world is seen instantly by just that moving things around. That old looking pokeball painted yeah, onto that rock. We got so a circle and then a circle and and with a fidelity. I think I and also I think how much orange blue pokeball. Felt, at least to me as a, an end user, how much felt that so much of the environment was streaming in in real time in so much detail, especially that sequence where she's flying through the environment. Um, you know, Mark Cerny has talked a lot about PlayStation 5 and the, you know, the incredible, you know, bandwidth it's going to have to, you know, move data from the SSD, you know, right onto screen. Um, Nick, can you maybe talk a bit about how that's sort of manifesting itself in this demo? I assume some of, you know, those improvements in PS5 are enabling types of things that just weren't possible in previous generations. Oh my gosh, are they just a bunch of enablers? Wow. So, so was this entire, like, setup just so that each one of them could have some time to talk? Yes, I want, I want some, I want some FaceTime as well. Get my face out there. Um, and the 
I, I hate this guy's shirt. Not because... Not because I hate what's on it, but I hate that I can't see what the rest of it says. If you love something, what? What? This, it's, I know it's some sort of dumb nerd shirt with a dumb joke on it, and I need to know what that dumb joke is. Stand up. Show me it, please. Just... I'm wearing a Wind Waker shirt. Just if anyone's curious. There, Wind Waker. Easy. Ooh, that delay there. That delay there. Just a little awkward. A little, uh, I feel... I do feel for these guys. I do feel for them. Because they have to, like, do all this stuff, set all this stuff up. With so much limited time and space, like... You know, there's only so much, like, they're all trapped at their homes, basically, and there's only so much they can do uh, in that sort of space. So, you know, I do, I do feel for them. Like, they got a lot of work to do because of this, but. Wider variety of types of games. Taking advantage of Lumen and taking advantage of Nanite. And one of the core. The only time I've ever taken advantage of Nanites was in Crisis. Because I think your armor was like made out of nanites or had nanite technology, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't really played Crisis in a while. In a long time now. The current generation, where you finally had enough computing and graphics power to enable a hundred player game with very, very high fidelity encounters. And. This new generation of technology that we're building with our <laughs> That's something I've always thought about. It's just like, what about, you know, Battle Royales and stuff in games that can have like 100 players in it? They always try to have some sort of graphics. What if somebody just made like a game with like a thousand players, but it was just like stick figures, you know? Made it very easy for it to run a thousand players because like it's not, there's no graphics for it to run. So just like a thousand players. If the gameplay was fun, I would that like just stick figure battle royale, a thousand people, 500 versus 500. Or just like a battle royale where you try to take out a thousand people. Something like that would be insanely fun, I feel like. It would just be dumb fun, you know? PlayStation 5 dev kit and recorded the signal that came out over HDMI. So it's a totally live demo and it's replayable and uh, it's a little bit different every time you play it. Totally. That's cool. It's... That's what's so exciting to me is like this is, you know, real time um, footage. Uh, I find it so funny that like the like a big chunk and the like the very first stuff we saw of the demo was super slow and then at the end it's just like just speed injected into your uh, veins going super fast and it lasted very not long like that was like the fun exciting part of the demo but it just was like over instantly like it's cool that you can do that sort of stuff but like if you think about it would that really be fun? Like, if, if the fun part of the game is over in, like, five seconds? I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking this. Actually, visiting a space will be much deeper than you've ever seen before. And the ability of the hardware and the engine to stream in massive amounts of content as you're going through a huge environment, um, I think it's going to have a much bigger impact on, the, on, on gaming than people are expecting right now. You know, until this next generation of hardware... Um, Previous generation console games had Where's to be he going? To load data Where's he going with this? Mechanical device, right? It has its roots in the 1950s. Um, and yeah, 1950s. Now, yeah, totally. Storage system is absolutely world class. Um, you know, not only the best in class in console, but also uh, the best on any platform. Um, better than high end PC. I think this is going to enable uh, the types of immersion that we only could have dreamed of in the past. Um, you know, the world of loading screens is over. Um, I'm and, sorry. You know, the days of, like, uh, he's talking about the technology uh, and how it's like, yo, and yo, and this is going to be, you know, so our, cool uh, and really be, you know, a, you know, is, uh, the ability to build games boom and stuff. He just, he just seems so out of it. So I don't know if he's, you know, so tired or bored or something. He just, yeah, he's just like, uh, yeah, um, I, uh, 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 I don't know. Just like no emotion behind it. They all just seem like so bored, except for you know the main man himself. He actually like, but like the the bottom and the top right, they just like they're bored. The 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 bottom left or the bottom right, 
He just looks confused. Well, I mean, to me, he's just like, what's going on? What are we all talking about? I'm, 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 a, I'm a con artist. I've, I've been, <laughs> I've just been shambling my way throughout everything, and I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here somehow. Being able to build content once and deploy it across devices. So on higher end hardware where we can support Nanite directly. Uh, we'll be able to render scenes at the fidelity that uh, that you just saw, uh, like on PlayStation 5. Um, for, say, an Android or iOS mobile device, what we will be able to do is have tools that help to scale that content down uh, so that you'll be able to take the game that you built at the highest fidelity level for console. And uh, bring This is a guy that's super excited to be watching this right now. Tim, do you have a I between, like, almost... Of, you know, like, didn't watch this just because I just I, I don't know for some reason I just didn't care like all the everything uh like all the announcements before this I was just like I don't know just something about this I don't think I I don't know I don't care I was just like not vibing with it and I kind of think I maybe I should have just not passed this man it'll totally be worth it for all the views and stuff I get from this video totally worth it for that but um just and I don't know something. This is and just what's possible and the absolute. Best uh, my, I feel like my original feelings about this was correct, and I, I could have easily just passed. I was ex just. It's all technical jargon. Every device that exists in the world, and we just show me what you can do with the technical jargon. Don't tell me what you can do it. Show me. There's a there's a rule in movies and like TV shows and stuff. That I think is really imperative here. It's the show, don't tell. Because if you tell people, it's boring. If you show people, I don't go on a rant about about how I'm bored. Two hundred million console players. Okay, but is this gonna work on the Nintendo Switch? That's what I, that's what I'm here for. Their games are gonna feel oh man oh man think about this if the nintendo doesn't come out with like a nintendo switch 2 or something with better hardware oh think about the ports coming over from what the con like xbox and playstation and pc think about the ports from that running on unreal engine 5 oh the the now games that have ports like witcher 3 they look so not nearly as good. Oh man, if Nintendo doesn't do something, I think that might be a pretty big hit to them. Because you don't know what it is prior to shipping your game. But with this um, technology, with the Lumen technology and Nanite... Yeah, he's got a bunny on his shirt. Super rich and super dynamic. So also, how comfy do you think that, like, leather chair is? I don't know if it's leather or not, but it looks kind of leathery, I guess. How comfy do you think it is? It looks pretty comfy to me. That wooden chair... I don't think it would and be that comfy. To like, you know, I assume like destructible environments. The le see, he's he's moving around to show the leather chair off. He knows he knows that's what we're interested in. Okay, we can see the if you love something shirt a little bit more now, but there's like a block. So detailed and so realistic. Is that partially because you can now move the environment more in real time? Yes, and even effects like when we open that big dome where all the statues are, the light just floods in and bounces all over the place. You know, you, you really, the way you would have had to do that in the past is you would have to cheat. And now it can be fully dynamic. You can blow a hole in the sky. Well, that's cool and all that. You can actually do it now without cheating. Like, as someone who's not a game developer, again, means literally nothing to me. It's all, it's all magic to me. <laughs> Get that effect, but it would have to be sort of pre like I don't want to know how the spell is yeah. performed. I just want you to perform the spell. Dungeon? Like Minecraft dungeons coming out this year? Totally uh, gonna stream that. If you'd like to see me stream that game, make sure you're following me at uh, twitchtv clandor I stream there daily. So uh, also, I just realized I'm blocking the guy with the bunny shirt a little bit. Ah, whatever. I don't think you're really missing much. Everyone knows the Mandalorian, how that used Unreal Engine, and you know, there's certain. Oh yeah, the Mandalorian and stuff. They. Uh, I I suggest looking up some uh, background, uh, some of that stuff if you're interested in the man. There were some cool things about that. 
uh, see what I <laughs> oh clan or you're a hypocrite you uh, don't like people talk see they they were actually using the technology in the videos and talking about how that like you could see like real time and like stuff like this they're just talking about how it's used without like showing anything I don't know and like it's a different sort of thing right like I came here to see like the new generation of PlayStation stuff and it's all about technical stuff but like what I'm looking I don't know it's just it's a thing for a thing you know I'm not a hypocrite maybe I'm a hypocrite I don't know I don't care you pick a high resolution asset you want, you load it in, you don't have to think about making levels of detail or normal maps or any of the hey. usual stuff that goes with making game hey. content. Hey, I never think about anything in the first place, so. Trying to tell a story or to make an experience. That's amazing. So, you know, in the eyes of a consumer, like, you'll see an asset that's in, you know, a, a movie. In the eyes of a consumer, that's me. Um, I don't care about any of this. Down the polygons and kind of, you know, kind of scale it down for a game engine. Yeah, and in fact, actually, Quixel, um, that's also part of Epic, their assets, they come, when you when you take an asset from the Quixel store, there is a movie quality version that would be... See, the pro a big problem with this is that they showed off the tech demo of an Unreal... They didn't even show off a video game. They showed off a tech demo of something that's not even coming out until next year. So we're not even going to be seeing games that are used in the Unreal Engine until like next year like we're just this just seems so useless and pointless to me and it sounds like with this engine you're saying it's going to be like i'm sure it's it, i'm sure it is going to be revolutionary but i want to see the revolution compatibility i mean it's repeating myself we want to support um developers bringing their it's repeating myself in different ways and in fact we will be doing that ourselves with um fortnite so um, For so Fortnite, Fortnite, we like Fortnite, we like Fortnite, we like Fortnite. And then next all right, year, make sure you uh, name drop Fortnite so that all the little oh, kids yeah, will yeah, have something to dance to. What's that sound? Oh, just realized um, I thought that was my uh, laptop, but no, that must have been one of their one person yeah, in this um, call you know, must have like unplugged something. Uh, who unplugged something? Who was it? Was it Fortnite has turned into, you know, really kind of this metaverse like platform where we're seeing kind of different experiences powered by Unreal. I love what's how I I don't even care if you I don't even care if you don't like Fortnite as a game. I think what they're doing in Fortnite is so cool and revolutionary. They're doing so many cool things with Fortnite like there's there's so many experimental things that can be applied to so many other video games or just experiences in general. That I'm really excited to see. Based on what Kim was saying, it's now going to be even easier, I guess, for the assets to move. But from an experience standpoint, do you see kind of a blending of, of games with more traditional entertainment powered by Unreal? Yeah, absolutely. You know, all of these worlds. I'm just waiting for somebody to create like a full-on CGI show using the Unreal Engine. Production that's being done on the Mandalorian and other projects all around Hollywood. Like so far, what the Unreal Engine has been used for is just like CGI background stuff, but I think it would be really cool to have like a full blown CGI show. And each of those processes started with rebuilding their uh, their you know, movie quality assets um, for real time, you know, using our tools. But uh, in the future, this is going to be an exercise to build every asset exactly once and then deploy it everywhere. Um, and the future isn't just going to be it's a nice looking plasma ball though separate market i'll say that i'll give them that and architects visualize their creations now um and that's awesome we're helping film and television makers you know oh yeah that's something architects could do you know that you can draw it down and paint it out and stuff or whatever how architects do it but you know they could like legitimately build their building before uh they do it <laughs> And maybe we won't get nearly as many uh, ugly buildings as we do right now. Do you want to see uh, some good stuff about architecture? Watch John Tron's video about it. He, uh... Yeah. Yeah. It was powered by Unreal. It was running in the cloud, and you could go Video games powered by Unreal. I would download a car. I would, Mom. Um, the next step with all 
of those types of experiences. So you're telling me that it's okay and legal now to download uh, cars now, huh? Is that what you're? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Or you're designing a car, uh, or you're building a, a television series. Um, we want the next generation of these experiences to be bringing all of those assets directly to gamers in a fun way, deploying them into Fortnite and every other. I have always thought about like messing around in the Unreal engines because I think four or th one of th three, one of them's free. I think, or maybe they're both. I don't know. Maybe they're all free. I don't know. I've I've always thought about dabbling in it. Maybe you know, trying my hand at making a game. It's you know, that sounds like it would be work and effort. So that's not something I'll ever be doing. So. Twitter page, you know, your Twitter uh, account, anything like that. But the next generation of these experiences... Are you telling me that Twitter is going to be run by the Unreal Engine 5? <laughs> okay. For players together. Our, our player, players are together with all of their friends. I'm sorry, but the Unreal Engine is not capable of running so many bad takes at once. It's not going to be powered by advertisements that pop up and annoy you. It's a world that's going to be powered by awesome content that these con companies make available to power your entertainment experiences. And, um... And we're, we're blazing this path to some extent with Fortnite, but there will be a lot of other games uh, heading in this direction, a lot of them powered by Unreal Engine. And uh, I think this is the next step in the entire digital content industry, not just games. I do agree with him. I do agree that kind of like, you know, they're testing things out with Fortnite, and I think some of that stuff is going to be the future of, you know, gaming. I, uh, like, I do hope more video games start just having more fun with, like, you know, of concerts, or it doesn't even necessarily have to be a concert. Like, what if they made a, a TV show in the video in the video game, and, like, you could watch it or, like, interact it. Like, it would be, like, a 3D TV show. You could, like, walk around in it and, like, see everything that's happening. Like, you could pause it, walk around, and uh, see, like, the show from a different angle. And obviously, UE, you guys, I think, you know, really focused on kind of making it accessible that guy's that guy's top right shirt is still annoying me start developers can you maybe talk a bit about sort of the you know your vision of kind of how easy it is to you know build something in unreal i mean are we going to get to a level where it is sort of like a you know this is you can still go going on huh what, is that still entry going to go down in the next generation look if you're like a person yeah, who's yeah, interested think, in yeah, making video games to, i'm sure you're super pumped up development scenarios all the way from uh, your AAA game developer, or I wonder. I feel. I think this guy's had the most talk time out of all of them. Uh, that's the kind of thing that sort of sucks with this sort of presentation. It's just like, yeah, you're on. You have to like, you know, you're on. Li you're live and stuff, but like, you can't really do much. You just sort of have to sit there, be bored. Which has been used by. Over 100 million people. Oh, and you can't, like, take out your phone and look at it. Otherwise, you're like, oh, unprofessional. I'm going to take out my phone and open up uh, Pokemon. Because last time I did that in a reaction video, I caught a shiny Chansey. I don't care if I'm unprofessional. I am unprofessional. I want that shiny Chansey. If I actually find another shiny Pokemon, I'm going to be ecstatic. Content development and content deployment scenarios. Um... You know, we, we feel that the nothing shiny so far. This is broken right now. If you look at the app store, this is Spotify, getting really just. Oh, I have one more Pokemon. Come on. Each competing for the top ten charts, um, where you know, virtually all of the sales occur. Um, and you have a small oh. number of and a whole lot of losers in that way, and it's not a fair situation for game developers. And you have a lot of amazing games that just get lost because they have no shiny, numbers. no shiny. Maybe if it were, yeah, Pokemon Go was running an Unreal Engine people, um, five, there would have been a shiny within existing games. And you know, this is this has been part of the industry since the uh, days of Quake and Unreal Tournament, when uh, user mods became possible, and we and like. id Software released our first tools. Um, oh, that'll be interesting for people to make mods now, in the Unreal Engine. Like, if a video game comes out, users, if you look would that be Fortnite, more daunting because of how amazing the graphics are? And uh, like, would you have to have a PC that can run better? You have two separate worlds, right? You have the professional I don't know. Tools of Unreal Engine and Unity, and then you have the tools for the masses in Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, and they're really not connected anymore. They're not connected. Did he just say Fortnite and Minecraft? Crossover, um, and to enable. Uh, all and then he said the word crossover. Fortnite, Minecraft, crossover confirmed. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here for. <laughs> and uh, we'll be doing a lot of work on and uh, 
in the coming years. I'm just waiting to get like a Minecraft diamond pickaxe and, and Steve in Minecraft Steve in Fortnite. Oh, to grab you. Um, but I want to talk about the you know the underlying architecture. Also, Steve for Smash. Steve for Smash. Services, and I know that's something that you know Epic has focused on about kind of connecting people, you know, even cross play, but also um, you know finding ways. Oh my gosh, seriously, how long does this? How long does this go on for? Some of that's tied to UE5, but also it's just a general platform. Like it's cool that they're like going over like everything and giving people lots of information if you want it. And how that's gonna sort of. Oh my gosh, dang. I didn't think it would be this long of just the Unreal Engine. But we're launching the Epic Online services. Oh, if you were going to announce the Unreal Engine, just to say you're announcing something for Unreal. This is not. Oh, online features that we built for Fortnite, including cross-platform friends. Cross-platform? Now I'm interested. And enable players to connect together with all of their friends everywhere. Um, I do love cross-platform. I think pr almost every single game should be cross-platform. Um, you know, Obviously, with a toggle on and off, if some people don't want to do it, which those people are dumb, but I love playing with like my friends um, who don't have the same console as me. It's great. Work together to accomplish what we would accomplish with Fortnite, and to like. There really seemed to be a time where Fortnite started doing cross-platform that a lot more games were starting to do it. Like, we had Minecraft. Uh, Minecraft is fully cross-platform between Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, Mobile, PC. Like, uh, we, Rocket League is now cross-platform. Paladins, like... There is a good chunk of... There was a good chunk of games starting to become cross-platform. And then it just seems to die. It just dro dropped as far as I'm aware of. I don't know when the last cro like actual cross-platform game came out was. Ridiculous. So many games would benefit from cross-platform. Like, the Overwatch. Like, even if it, like, just leave PC alone. Xbox and PlayStation. Boom. really helps to bridge the gap. Um... You know, that's existed all of the other other platforms and, and halo halo pc and halo pc yes let's do it or did i say halo pc and halo pc i meant halo xbox and halo pc i don't care just cross platform that stuff please but now this is open um it's approved by all three of the console makers uh, for use on their on their platforms um and it's uh, ready for all game developers to adopt and uh so we're so we're really trying to uh, okay so did he just say it was approved for all consoles so that means unreal engine is going to be on the xbox like it's going to be on everything like i don't understand this i think the next stage of the industry is really don't understand why this is a playstation reveal when it's when this is just a tech demo that can be used on like that'll be used on all the consoles i don't know release their games on all platforms as we did with fortnite yeah, I, I think that's such an interesting idea that, you know, these, these gaming platforms almost become, you know, it's another social network now, right? And I know you guys have House Party that's been very successful over the past uh, few months especially, but it feels like now, you know, you talk, talk of those numbers. With that What's this? Shows, can anyone you know, tell me what the house, this House Party thing is down in the comments Snapchat below? If you can, thank you. I don't, I have, kind of have like not being a hater or anything, I haven't. I don't. I don't know what they're talking about. Game services as as kind of a gateway to connect with people and any you know. Wait, a gateway? A gateway to drugs? Well, you know. Wait, gateway. He keeps saying gateway. A gateway to murder because we all know video games make people murderers. Seriously, where are all the news journalists, people who are all like? If video games cause murder, aren't we going to have like a pandemic when this pandemic is over? That like, oh, everyone's been playing video games. We're all murderers now after the pandemic is over. You know, the murder rate is just going to skyrocket through the roof now because of that. So stupid. And then you get all of your I mean, if you get like so many more people are playing video games just because you kind of have to play video games now just to have anything to do. With your Epic account on your Xbox. Um, and so uh, they're talking about Xbox during a PlayStation reveal thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So which are different degrees of openness. Um, and, uh, 
And uh, I think that's, that's really going to be freeing for the industry. It's going to mean that everybody can talk to everybody else, and there's no one company um, controlling the whole thing. Rather, it's a, it arises as a result of the cooperation between all the different companies in the ecosystem. Yeah, see, this is one thing I don't understand about Fanboy Wars. Like, if it was just, like, Nintendo or Xbox like, or PlayStation, like, I, I like Xbox, but I like the other ones, too, but... Like, let's just say I'm an Xbox fanboy and I only want Xbox game, uh, Xbox to exist. That would be stupid. Like, they would have a monopoly. They wouldn't ever have any need to... They wouldn't have a rivalry or competition, so they could just, like, throw out whatever they want. They wouldn't have to improve and rise. Like, anytime there's, like, a clear monopoly like that, it just, every like, it suffers. So, we should, I don't know, fanboy, fanboy fighting is stupid. Console Wars is stupid. We all help each other improve. Maybe it's a game, but maybe it's just sort of this shared experience, and it feels like, you know, the, the visual fidelity now um, that these next gen consoles will bring. I'm just waiting for someone to sneeze, to be honest. She's like, is someone going to sneeze? I want I want that to happen. Like movie visual effects. Like, what are the things that I guess real time games can't do still that we get to see in some of these other shows? I, you know, I think I think we're getting much, much closer in this generation to get to the point where. You know, like, I was trying to say something, but the the other guy was not, didn't stop, and he was just like, I. Massive explosions. Michael Bay, let's go. I'm interested now. We got explosions on the brain. Explosions. 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 One of the coolest things that we've seen um, with the advent of show. What was that guy? He was like, he was like looking at something. I wonder if he's got notes or something. Maybe he got a text message. Who knows? Who cares? I don't. I really don't care. So we're seeing people say they've got a car chase in their TV show that they're trying to make. Then they'll actually drive cars with okay. steering wheels and joy pads to, to race against each other and then film that after the fact. So it's starting to become very, um, almost like very Matrix work way in the, in the way that they're using. Oh my gosh, did we just confirm we're in the Matrix? Elon Musk, save us, Sam. We start to rock the potential of what real time um, interactive entertainment is about. I think you're going to see traditional storytellers making the move into video games and, I think, and, and backwards and forwards. I think you're going to see this very, very fuzzy world where, uh, where it's just entertainment. You're building an IP. It can be a game. It can be a TV show. It can be all of these things. And uh, it's It really can even be leftover milk in the I'm fridge. I'm sure some people saw that, uh, you know, the showcase that you guys just showed, the, the demo, um, and everyone's like, I want to play that game. But we should clarify, that's, that's not a game, I don't think, right? It's just a tech demo? Oh, that's one thing I hate about tech demos. Like they, they, they look so cool, but they are just tech demos. So, and it also means you know we wanted to improve some animation systems in the engine, so it was much better to actually have a world that you can walk through, play, jump, whatever. Play, jump, kick a Goomba in the knees, take out his brain, and push it against the wall play through that and again it's uh it just blows me away when you see that yeah play through it until i we've all been waiting until i see someone actually play through it differently i'm just going to assume it was a tra uh, like a trailer see, uh, how you guys keep pushing the uh you know pushing the technology uh to the next level with ue5 and i know um it's gonna be next year you say so we'll see is there gonna be games anything else on, you know, anything the, else uh, that they talk about in this presentation. Yeah, that's right. Um, mm -hmm. A preview of UE5 available early next year, and then shipping the, the full 5.0 uh, later in the year. Ripple effect. Uh, and I imagine, uh, you know, characters will also... The same Grand Theft Auto 5 came out before Unreal Engine 5 came out. Could have been the perfect balance of fives, you know? streaming more into the environment you know no load times as tim mentioned i mean these are other things that i guess are gonna you know oh that is one thing that i'm looking so forward to next gen is no load times you know, that's gonna be so nice will sort of evolve to with you <laughs> i think the character stuff feels like to me another area where you know we're not quite the same as you know movies yet in terms of character technology but i'm sure you guys are pushing on that too I, i'm, I'm very confident I there there's something that pro the something that I don't think a lot of people really notice, but the teeth on that model 
they're like different, but they look like actual teeth. They're not just like the same. That's interesting. Like I'm sure people are like, oh, the hair follicles. They're like all independent or something. But I don't know. You never see like the teeth. Without a huge budget, can build digital humans that are world class. Um, we have a lot of investments going on that you'll hear, hear about um, over the If you want to see someone who does an astounding um, job with CGI so, so and stuff this, uh, and humans, check like, out Astartes, I think. Astartes, it's a really well done and cool, uh, like, one person so, project of CGI based off of the Warhammer universe. Go check him out. I don't know what program he uses, but I maybe he, maybe he'll be able to step up his game with the Unreal Engine Five. I don't know. This is not just a graphics engine, right? It's a full simulation engine. Um, it aims to power every aspect of simulating a realistic environment, um, including very detailed physics, with vehicles, and collision, and destruction, and everything else. I think Everyone that, just looks so bored, <laughs> uh, including myself. I bet I when I'm just listening, I'm just like. It's going to be very mm -hmm. exciting because we don't yet know exactly what they're going to be. And how does, uh, you know, you guys mentioned Fortnite moving to UE5 next year. Like, I mean, how how is this going to impact, you know, Fortnite, do you think, in terms of it's the game? Yes. UE5? Sure you don't want to spoil much, but it's like just technically sort of like, is that going to enable... Look, like, I, I like Fortnite. I'm not a Fortnite. I actually do like Fortnite. It puts a, a I don't think it's the best game ever of all time, but I, I enjoy... It's just a fun game to have, you know, mess around with, I think. And I always feel like instead of mo moving Fortnite to the Unreal Engine, they should just make legitimately Fortnite too. I don't know. I think what we have now is a is a very very. I kind of miss game sequels. It feels like instead of getting sequels to games, we're just getting like small DLC throughout the ages that you know just keep a game's life going like rainbow six siege we're, we're not going to get a sequel to that we're just going to get more operators in the future because it makes some money but i always i like sequels because like it's an improvement in graphics it's, there's like new things to do there's like there's more ideas and stuff is that how you view it as sort of this uh you know i don't know it feels like it feels like there's just you know, sort of metaverse, but is that sort of making a brand new game or just getting small DLC? Creators want to take it. Yeah, you know, they they define a platform as a as an ecosystem in which uh, the uh, most of the content is not created by the by the company that operates it, right? Um, and uh, I think if you look at Fortnite today, it's not that. Um, but anything's possible in the future. I think that's a that, that's a very interesting direction for the whole game business. Um, every game developer is thinking about this problem of uh, how to not limit their experience by the 10 or 100 or 1,000 people on their development team, but how to um, uncap the entire world's creativity to enable an entirely new generation of game experiences to be developed in an entirely new way. Yes, yes, creative mode and yeah, Fortnite and all that stuff. Five obviously shows the high end of the aspiration for everyone to, uh, you know, what they'll eventually be able to, to maybe make. And yeah, that demo is uh, absolutely stunning. I, I, before we go, I wanted to ask you, like, that demo. Okay, before you go, is this almost done? Please. Of, like, you know, how Please. Please. Well, well, we started thinking about it oh. straight after. Oh. Was when we about there's it. like nothing. I'm sorry, there's just um, nothing to react to because I just don't care about uh, any of this stuff. I don't care. September through to, to March. Um, and I think the team. That wood chair does have wheels on it. That is a very weird chair that wood chair is weird it's kind of weird to, it's like it's like a it's 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 a thick chair with wheels on it that you guys i'm covering it up and i'm too lazy to move my webcam <laughs> i want to play that game and i know we're not necessarily going to get it but uh it hopefully will inspire a lot of creators around the world about what will be possible um you know with ue5 and also the next generation yeah so, ue5 uh, ue this i feel real excited now about what we're going to get to see um for the rest of the year for for all these next gen games and of course, i gotta admit i am not excited i am so bored for joining me guys uh it's great to see the first look at ue5 and hear about where epic's going no 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 thank uh, you yeah. for hosting this right. thanks guys cool. oh bright because the character always had these light effects what oh, okay 
Now we got some stuff going. Play the future. Summergamefest.com. My thing, my thing fell. My thing fell. That is that it? Is that the entire presentation? Is that it? Is it done? Thanks for what? Is there nothing else happening? Is this, this is it? Uh, was that it? Was that it? So we had this entire countdown to hype us up, to tell us when it's about to go live, you know, expecting some sort of big reveal. And it was the Unreal Engine 5. I'm not saying that's bad. Like, I, there's some cool stuff in the Unreal Engine 5. I just don't understand a couple of things. If any of you, like, they specifically said that it's on, like, all consoles and PC and stuff. So, like, why was this a PlayStation 5 thing? I don't understand that. This is the tech demo that could have, that can easily, that maybe not easily, I don't know. But, like, that can run on the other consoles and stuff. Like, they're literally making a thing for all the consoles. This is just weird to me. I don't get it. And the way they hype this up, uh, I, I thought there was going to be something so much bigger and better than this. Uh, so, like like I was saying during the, the whole thing, was I am... I'm not the I'm the I'm the average Joe. I'm the consumer. They were advertising this to the average Joe consumer of the people who want to see new video games, the people who want to see stuff. They didn't show off a single video game. That was a tech demo that's not going to be coming out. It's not a video game. No one can actually like that. Yeah, you can play it, but only if you have the tech demo. And none of us are going to get the tech demo. It's not coming out. It's not a thing. They legitimately just showed us something that we can't even play and we can't even and pe and the people who actually can use it can't use it until next year <sighs> it's cool but it did not deserve like an hour long presentation by itself i'm sorry the, this pre this whole thing was so much worse than the uh, than the, the the xbox i i know i actually liked the xbox presentation but i know it was getting a lot of flack because it didn't show that much gameplay but I'm sorry, but there was the the, the Xbox. Uh, like I'm not memeing here. Some people, I you know, meme. Uh, there was legitimately gameplay that we will eventually be able to play as long as the games do come out, which they should hopefully come out. Like the first game they showed, that was at that wasn't a trailer. That was like gameplay of what was happening. That was something that's tangible. I don't know. I got a lot of thoughts going through my head right now. I'm just very upset about what I just went through right now. I shouldn't have watched this. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have reacted to it. Like there is so. You can you can say that you know the Xbox might have you know mishandled how they presented what like you know gameplay uh premiere trailer or whatever but i there there was things to show off that was actually good there was different video games there was something for everyone like that's a there there was something for everyone like it wasn't catered to just one specific type of group and that's kind of the sort of thing that uh, i feel like a lot of people fall victim to is that when they are like ex about to watch like that xbox uh, presentation what is that they're expecting it to all be catered to themselves all the games that they want when they have to show games to everyone you need to you need to watch like the specialized stuff like the actual trailers for the specific stuff that you want not just i don't know i'm just whole tangent here but I do think the Xbox, like, there was multiple stuff shown. There was, you know, actual gameplay that maybe not the most, but there was some that we will actually be able to get to once the game comes out. And, like, there was things shown up more than, like, 
like what games that have you know the xbox thing where you can buy it on the xbox one and get it in the series x for free like there was actual important stuff that was shown off that wasn't just you know gameplay there there's there were so many i legitimately think there are so many like small little details like that and they kept it brief and casual you know they didn't go in on all this technical jargon like it was but like playstation just like keeps coming out with all these playstation things and they're just technical jargon i mean i don't understand it just to show something that we can get behind sure the maybe the gameplay presentation what was more trailers but like i can get behind a trailer it shows me what the world is it shows me what the game is going to be about i can get behind that this tech demo that can be on xbox or pc doesn't impress me especially like this this is going to be on everything not just playstation it's so weird and bizarre i don't know i don't get it. i don't understand i am having a midnight life crisis because of this i don't know there i got a lot of stuff going through my head uh i need to like write down everything all of my points and like you know actually dissect it but i'm too lazy to do that and i you know this is just a dumb reaction video the tech demo is impressive ue5 you know is probably going to be very impressive and you know help you know scape the landscape of future video games in the future and entertainment as a whole i just didn't care about this i did not care at all there is too much technical jargon i didn't care about i just just show me stuff even if it's a trailer, just show me things I can get into, you know? Well, I think that's most of everything I wanted to cover, but uh, I'm sure I'll get some flack for just being a Sony fan, Sony hater. <laughs> I like I like PlayStation. Um, I also like Xbox. I legitimately think the Xbox... Uh, presentation was better i liked it i know there uh, i i i will however i'm going to give everyone props that it, it must be a lot harder and stuff to you know work on this stuff with the whole pandemic and like being stuck at home and stuff so i props to everyone for just even trying to do this stuff right now it's just this one in particular was very lackluster I didn't really have too much high hopes for the Xbox One, so maybe that's why uh, that's why I wasn't disappointed with it, like a lot of other people were. I don't know. I was just like, "Oh, they're gonna show new games. Yes, let's go. I'm excited." Uh, maybe Halo. Ah, uh, uh. But I legitimately think the Xbox presentation was good. Maybe it was mishandled a bit, but I legitimately think it was good. This was just completely bad there was a uh, like a, a couple of minutes tech demo and then at, while they're talking about technical jargon in it and as an average joe consumer i don't i just it's meh it's meh it's meh to me and i think this was another mishandled thing by so playstation and uh i don't like i, I don't know there was so uh, some good stuff in it i guess maybe if you're in maybe if you're a video game creator or something this is for you but they should have they should have marketed it better honestly like they were hyping this up as like the next hugest biggest thing for playstation at least that's what i i don't know this whole there's been a lot of mishandling uh so that's just that's what I think of this. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching, everyone. Let me know what you thought about this uh, a whole debacle down in the comments below. Let me know if you think I'm just a PlayStation hater or not, or uh, whatever. Leave a like, even if you think I'm a PlayStation hater. But thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, stay classy.